Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. It's Salisa coming to you from Beautifully Me and You. And today I thought I'd bring you a video all about sinking funds. That's right. What are sinking funds? Why are they so important? And this video is probably gonna be considered the beginner's edition. And if that sounds like something that interests you, let's get right into it. When starting my cash budgeting journey, I had no idea what a sinking fund was. And so I had to do a little bit of investigation and I felt like maybe this could help somebody who's new on their journey to figure out what a sinking fund is, what type of sinking funds they would like to establish, and that will get you headed in the right direction when you're ready to start your cash budgeting as well. Sinking funds can be considered like a short-term savings account, okay? So it's like a little pocket that you'll put money into, whether it's electronically or in cash form, but like a little mini savings account. That little small savings account has a special purpose. And let's be clear, with that being said, a sinking fund can either be an expected expense, non-goal, or goal. Most of mine happen to be non-goal, but I'll get into that a little bit later. As far as the sinking fund, you would deposit into it regularly. Sinking funds are separate from your regular savings and your emergency funds. Your emergency fund actually could be considered a type of sinking fund, right? You're depositing it money in there on a regular basis to get to a certain goal amount. And that will be used in case of true emergencies. Whereas sinking funds, you're kind of using them either for a short-term or a long-term goal, even rolling goals will work. And I'll expand and explain on that more when I get to the three different types of sinking funds. Why are sinking funds important? That would be the next question. Sinking funds are important because they ease your burden, your debt burden, right? So if you're thinking about an expense that you need to come up with the money for, you're kind of depositing small amounts along the way so that you can get to the amount that you'll need at the time that you need it versus an unexpected expense coming up and then you have to put it on your credit card or pull out of your savings account and um, you don't have the resources for it. So sinking funds kind of sets your budget up for success in the short-term or long-term goals of it all. Sinking funds to me also have helped me greatly in managing my cash flow, right? Before I kind of just would put money into savings, not sure what I would be using it for, but now since every dollar kind of has a designated category, I feel more comfortable when it's time for me to spend in those particular areas because the money's already been designated for that area. How much should you save in each individual sinking fund? Well, this is where the three types of sinking funds comes into play. If you think about expected sinking funds, those are gonna be things like your car insurance that you have to pay every six months. You know that it's coming up, and so you know that there's a certain amount that you'll need when you pay it at the six month increment. Or your car tags. Luckily here in Georgia, we only have to pay $20 a year, but I used to live in California where you have you know, a car registration fee that can be quite a bit but you already are anticipating that you'll need to pay that the following year. And so that can be an expected sinking fund. Some non-goal sinking funds, which are the majority of the ones that I have, they don't have a certain cap on them, but you know that these are things you want to save for in the future. So let me explain to you what some of my categories are. I have categories for both of my kids. And I didn't set a cap or a goal on it. I guess I could set a savings cap on how much money I would like in their sinking fund, but I just continue to deposit. And as we use the money or do something special, then I withdraw out of it. I have a category for household. I have a category for car maintenance. I have one for clothing, one for medical. I have one for birthday. One for my boss funds, which is my business, as I'm gonna set up new businesses, I need money, I'm not sure how much, so this is a non-goal category for me. I have one for my cat, Gingy. Unexpected expenses comes up with animals all the time. And so I'm just gonna continue to deposit small amounts of money every pay period and just let it continue to add up until I need it. Now, the last type of category would be a goal. And I do have a few sinking funds that are goal-oriented, one is my hardwood floors. I'm gonna save about $5,000 just to do the downstairs living room area, hardwood floors. I got a quote before for the stairs and the whole downstairs area and it was $12,000. 
So I'm gonna start with the living room. That's $5,000. Once I get that money in that sinking fund, then I'm gonna go ahead and call for them to do the floors. Another sinking fund that I have that's under the category of goals is Christmas. I think I'm gonna save about $3,000 for Christmas. And I know that sounds like a lot to some people, but you know, we all have our different expenses. I have older kids, they like nice things. So I'm thinking I'm gonna save about $3,000 for Christmas. That's the goal that I put on that envelope. Emergency funds is one of my sinking funds and I would consider that a goal as well. I'm trying to get to between three to six months worth of income. And that's gonna be some time probably before I get there, but as I just chip away at it slowly but surely, I'll finally get to that goal and then I would stop putting money in the emergency fund category. If you wanna see all the categories that I have for my sinking funds, feel free to watch some of my cash stuffing videos. I'll link one above and you can see what I'm actually stuffing each pay period. In those videos, I showcase all the different types of sinking funds that I have. Now, if you're trying to determine how much to put into each sinking fund every pay period, it really is so flexible. It's up to you. There's several videos out here in the cash stuffing community of different ways that people do it all across the board. As for me, I kind of do my budget first any additional money I have left over, I decide which categories I'm gonna break it into based on what I need. Like for instance, in my car maintenance fund, I know I'm gonna need a set of tires. And so I've been trying to get that envelope up to at least $600 so I can get the new tires. But even beyond getting it to $600, I'll continue to stuff money in the car maintenance fund because one cash stuffing envelope or category can cover several areas. Think about the fact that I might get into a car accident, God forbid. But if I do, I have a deductible, right? So that would come out of my car maintenance fund. I might need an oil change or some work done on my car. I've used my car maintenance fund for things like getting a car wash, a luxury car wash, like, you know, one of those deep clean kind. <laughs> I've used it for that. I mean, there's so many things that can be covered under one category. Let me give you some examples. All right, for something like home repairs, which I don't have one, but I'm thinking I might need to set up one because I do own a home. For home repairs, think about things like getting your HVAC system serviced, changing out filters, any home improvement projects like the hardwood floors that could come out of a category called home repairs. If you need any new furniture or new appliances, that can come out of home repairs. If you don't pay your property taxes with your actual mortgage, that could come out of the home category. There are several things that you can designate under one category, or if you like, you could split each one of those things up individually. That's the beauty of the sinking funds. Just have an idea of what you're setting up each category for. For me, I like to keep my categories around 10 to 12. I don't want several binders of envelopes that I'm stuffing, but there's others that like it that way. And that's the beauty of this whole program. It's up to you. This is your budget, do it your way. For my category of medical, I use it for things like prescription drug um, co-pays. Co-pays whenever I go to the doctors, or for instance, I had to get a splint for my thumb. I had to pay a fee for that. I paid it out of my medical fund. Any eyeglasses that I have to get for my kids, I take that out of my medical fund. Any dental appointments and co-payments that I have to pay through my dental insurance, I use that out of my medical fund. So there's several different things that I take out of one particular sinking fund. And you wanna kind of think about these areas as you're creating the funds that work for you. Trust me, you can always create new envelopes, new categories at any time. So just do some research and see what works best. I'll give you some ideas. I have one for birthdays, but some people have one for just holidays. And in that would include birthdays, holidays, gift giving, um, if you throw a party for your significant other, if you buy a cake or toys for your children for their birthday, any type of postage fees that you'll have, mailing out um, birthday cards or Christmas cards at Christmas time, that would all come out of holidays. If you bought new Easter outfits for your kids, that could come out of holidays. There's so many things that you can incorporate into that one sinking fund. I also have a non-goal sinking fund called travel. And out of there, I take things like car rental fees hotel costs, airplane tickets, 
If I wanna go on a cruise, that would come out of there. If I'm buying souvenirs for my friends or my coworkers, that comes out of my travel sinking fund. As far as my boss funds, I've been using that for things like supplies when I had my Etsy shop, or if when I wanted to purchase a domain for a website that I'm thinking about creating, that actually came out of my boss funds account as well. To get my laptop service, to get some malware taken off of it, I took that out of my boss funds. And now I need a ring light replacement for my ring light as I film my YouTube videos with it, that will be coming out of my boss funds. So there's several different things you can take out of each category, make it your own. A lot of people I've seen have a category for self-care. I don't have one particularly, but I think it's a great category. If you need things like getting your hair done, getting your nails done, getting a pedicure, the cost for any weight loss programs, any gym memberships, all of that could come out of personal care. Um, if you need facials or a massage just to keep yourself relaxed, all of that can come out of personal care. So there are several different categories that are out there and available for you. Think about what you actually spend your money on and that might steer you in the direction of what type of sinking funds you should set up. Now, how are you going to house your sinking funds? They are done, again, so many different ways. It's the individualized program, individualized budget to what you enjoy and what caters to you. For me, I like the actual physical feel of bills in my hand. And so if you check out one of my cash stuffing videos up above, I'll link it. I actually have folders. Actually, let me show you. I have envelopes like this. This is my daughter, Janae. This is household, medical, birthdays. So I actually have envelopes that I keep cash in. Now for me, I don't wanna keep large amounts of cash at my house. So whenever my envelope gets over $100, I put a fake $100 bill in the envelope and deposit the money in the bank. But I still have something physical to count which helps me to be accountable for what I'm spending. Now, as I spend that $100 bill that's in the envelope, then I would transfer the money from my savings account to my checking and spend it on whatever is needed. That's how I work my program. Let me give you some of the other ways that you can do it. Some people have a safe at their home and they keep all of the cash for all of their sinking funds in their home inside of a safe. So you can do it that way as well. Another option is Capital One 360 allows you to set up several savings accounts under one savings and for that sub accounts under one savings. And for that, you could name each one of your sub accounts, one of your sinking funds and put money into each one of those sub accounts that would then filter into your great big savings account. That's an option. Another option is there's credit unions that will allow you to set up so many different sub savings accounts. And so when your direct deposit comes into your checking account at the credit union, you can just transfer $15 over to household and $20 over to pets and $100 over to travel. However you see fit, that's a way to do it electronically. So there are other ways to do it that are non-cash related if you feel uncomfortable about having any cash or having to go to the bank. For me, every time I get paid, I actually go to the bank, physically take out what I'm stuffing into my cash funds and then do a cash stuffing video. And if at the end of the month, I have over $100 in an envelope, then I take those bills out and substitute them in with the $100 cash slips is what I call them. If you're interested in getting some cash slips, whether they be $100 or $1,000 slips, they're linked down below in my Amazon storefront feel free to go down there and look around. I have all the things that I use for my cash stuffings and for my cash budgeting journey linked down below in my Amazon storefront, okay? So the last thing I wanted to do before I go is show you how you would calculate, especially for one of those expected expenses, those expected sinking funds. There's a certain way that you can calculate how much you should take out each pay period, so that way you'll know how much to deposit into those funds and have the money available when the expense arrives. As far as the other ones, the non-goal and the goal, it's up to you. You can either set a goal amount that you wanna to get to by the end of the year and calculate it the same way that you would these expected expenses that I'm gonna speak about, or you can just put a certain amount in there each pay period based on what you have left over in your payroll, right? As far as the non-goal, same thing. 
If you wanna put a flat $15 in medical every single pay period, you can do that. But if one pay period you wanna put $5 and the next pay period you know you have a doctor's appointment coming up so you put $50, you can do that as well. That's the beauty of these sinking funds. You're going to do it your way and find your own path, you know? There's a huge community here on YouTube, so check out some other cash stuffing videos and you'll get some other ideas of categories as well as ways to keep track and how much to actually put in. Now, let me show you how you would calculate the expected expenses and if you have a specific goal you're trying to get to by a certain time frame. All right, so to get started, let's say hypothetically you had car tags and you know that the payment is gonna be about $350 and it's gonna be due in February of 2022, and you get paid bi-weekly. Okay? And then let's say you also have car insurance, that's gonna be $930 for six months, and that's gonna be due in December of 2021. Again, you're still getting paid bi-weekly. So if you got paid on Fridays, let's say you're getting paid this coming Friday and you get paid every two weeks, you would count all of the pay periods that you have between now and February. So that'll be one, two, three, four through July, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, oh no, 14, 15. So you'd have 15 through December and then 16, 17, 18, 19. You'd have 19 pay periods. And if you wanted to have it by the time February comes, then you probably should calculate on 17 pay periods. And the same goes for your insurance. If you need to have it by the beginning of December, you should probably count for 13 pay periods. Okay, now that we have that information, you'll take the $350 that you need for the car tax, and you'll divide that by the number of pay periods you have left, which is 17. And so you need to put about $21 per pay period into a sinking fund for car for your car tax. And by the time February of 2022 comes up, you will have enough for your car tax. The same goes with the insurance. If it's $930, you would divide that by 13 pay periods, so you'll have enough by December, and that would be about $72. I would round up more than round down just to make sure you have enough. So $72 per pay period would go into car for that. So these two together would be $93 per pay period that you would be putting into your car sinking fund. And that way, by the time these bills arrive, you have the expected money you want. The same goals for goals. Let's say you get paid bi-weekly still and you wanna save $5,000 by next year. Oops, wait a minute, next year. She can't write. Okay, <laughs> the $5,000 divided by 26 pay periods and that will be $192.30 that you need to put into a sinking fund for, let's say you wanna save this for your house down payment. So if you need the $5,000 by this time next year and you know it's going towards a house down payment, you would set up a category called house and put $192.30 in there every pay period so that sinking fund will meet the 5,000 goal by this time next year. Super simple, right? Okay, I think that's everything in regards to sinking funds. We went over what a sinking fund is, how you would set up your sinking funds, why sinking funds are important, and some categories and different types of sinking funds that are out there. If you have any other questions in regards to sinking funds, leave me a comment down below. I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have, but I think this video probably covered it. All right, well, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, you know how I do. One secret emoji right here. Leave that in the comments and that way I'll know you a real one. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, I appreciate you watching. Soon I'm gonna be coming to you with my budgeting video. That will probably be coming out next. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. 
It helps the video to be suggested to others when you like the video. I love to interact with you in the comments and subscribe because, I mean, it's free. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, that's everything I have for today. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.